Mr. President, members of the board, staff members, ladies and gentlemen, one of the responsibilities of any governing board is to monitor the state of the organization. And one of the responsibilities of the organization's chief executive is to report to the board the state of the organization. And I am happy to report to you that the state of the General Board of Higher Education and Ministry is strong. Our staff has been hard at work in preparation for this, for this meeting, as you can imagine, both at work with our routinely, uh, our routine business mandated by the Book of Discipline, which is ongoing, and also responding to new challenges and new opportunities. The General Conference was also concerned about young clergy leadership and gave this agency $7 million to develop programs under the rubric of the Young Clergy Initiative. We convened a summit of interested parties across the church, the majority of which were young, and we learned a great deal. We've listened to uh, the combined wisdom of all our boards of ordained ministry and uh, we are going to listen to you as we move forward with this initiative. I'm grateful to Reverend Amy Gearhart for the wonderful message this morning as, as, as she framed us very well theologically for our task. Uh, moving um, in another conversation I had recently, I think uh, is also instructive. The church has said we need more young clergy. That's the what. Well, to get to what, if you if you back that up, you go what, how, why. And the young people, the young people are asking why. And as uh, uh, Amy helped us think about, it uh, starts with not me, why me, who me, <laughs> how, and what. That's a long journey. And part of our task is to help young people negotiate that spiritual journey in a way that honors their gifts and honors uh, the love they have for Christ and Christ's church. So all that's to say that while we have done a lot of research and a lot of listening, we need further research to define the problem and obstacles so that we can derive responsible approaches to solving it. At the same time, we see that immediate action is needed to respond to the things we already know. So it's a dual track as we move forward together. Our staff has spent considerable time and energy looking again at our agency goals and priorities and identifying things that we should stop doing and things that we should initiate or put more emphasis on. And you'll see a presentation later about our best thinking at this point on these matters. We realize that fine tuning is needed. And we realize that we will need to be more precise in developing measurable results. This is a work in progress. And you are part of that work and part of that conversation. All of this has been done in the midst of, for example, the Board of Ordained Ministry training 32 annual conferences in the development of group mentoring leaders, training 600 Board of Ordained Ministry members, Board of Ordained Ministry staff, DCOM members, DSs in ministry, all this training around legislation at the beginning of the quadrennium. The Collegiate Ministries Office developed and ran a phenomenally successful Imagine What's Next conference for about 500 college students. Let's hear it for them. Yes. On your table, you will see the very first edition 
of Interpreter Magazine ever devoted to a single subject. We are very proud of this. The subject is United Methodist Higher Education. And this magazine tells the story of our institutions. We're very proud of this. We want you to uh, take that copy. And if you need more, we have more. We want you to share those uh, with everybody that you think could, be, could benefit from them. We're very proud of it. Our global education continues to develop higher education networks for mutual assistance internationally. Loans and scholarships in 2012-13 academic year awarded 1,718 recipients $2.5 million, all the while converting to a new loan and collection software. This is Ginger Rogers dancing backwards in high heels, y'all. <laughs> Very good job. Office of Administrative Services has overseen the, uh, the makeover of the building, which you will see uh, tomorrow with new carpets and paint, and uh, also implemented a new human resources software, which has <laughs> been a, a challenge. And we'll also implement data, a new data services system at the at late April. The Office of Interpretation is uh, working on a redesign of our website to better inform, resource, and equip our many constituencies. Uh, we have ongoing work in all our divisions around uh, the MEF Fund, Black College Fund. Uh, we certify and support chaplains in many venues. I was privileged to participate in the uh, European uh, Military Chaplains Retreat two weeks ago. Uh, I was very moved and impressed by the quality of the support that our endorsing agency provides to our military chaplains. And these are our people, our pastors, serving deployed troops who are far from home and in harm's way. And they do a wonderful job. We all should be proud. As, as I reviewed in preparation for this meeting the priorities from last quadrennium, I'm proud to tell you that the board and the staff has met all the major challenges and goals outlined in, that, in that, those priorities for the last quadrennium, as well as navigating the uncertainty of general conference. These are just a few examples of the good work our staff is doing in service of the church we all love and are called to serve. We're excited that you're here. We look forward to this new beginning, a new partnership. We're going to do some things differently. We're going to do some things we haven't done before, which is, uh, I hope, a greater engagement of board and staff in our common work. Uh, we're going to have to learn to dance together. We're going to have to learn a new balance. And I'm confident that we can do this. I say this with great confidence because the state of this agency is strong and the state of this board is strong. Thank you. <laughs>